Uh, I'm on a train station and I can see a uh, roof burning. Is it a houseboat or a factory or what is it? Uh, I think it's a storehouse. Yeah, it's a huge fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out, pumping. It's just before dawn and Crew 27's been called to an apartment fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, get, we'll do this now. Flames are tearing through a tiny flat, threatening neighbouring apartments and the shops down below. Bullet takes charge of the aerial platform, while Garth cuts his way into the adjoining shop to check if the fire has spread. They're joined by crews from Station 42 and 59. Amidst all the chaos, Hazy is cool-headed. We've got a couple of stations at this point doing some um, search and rescue, which is part of the initial firefighting phase. So they'll evacuate whoever's upstairs. There's been some evacuated already. But there's one resident still missing, and she lives in that burning flat. apartments are evacuated but no one can find the young woman from 62. The fire is burning through the apartment floor and into the shop below. Just nail that fridge in here mate. Nail the top of that fridge for us. Oh, that's enough to turn off the thing. Station 27 is tackling two jobs. Hazy's checking to see if the shop fire is under control while bullets attacking the flames from above. He'll need every one of his 15 years of experience tonight. Because it's a shop, we're going to have to try and make sure we get the gas no turned off. Yeah, I've just shut down the uh, power as well. Please, that's, um... Bullet has a bird's eye view of the scene and he doesn't like the look of that roof. It's threatening to collapse and there are still fires inside the building. I reckon we'll use the whole of this. Yeah, yeah, real quick. Right, you can't save lives on an empty stomach, so most stations have a cooking roster. A bad one. No, of course. One of the um, things you've got to remember when you're cooking in a fire station, you've got to be able to turn it off and come back to it anytime. Tonight, Chris is whipping up his famous Thai chicken curry. Captain sous chef. I had 25 years in the Navy. But, um, uh, I did a lot of time on patrol boats, so we had small crews of uh, 24, and I, uh, I was normally up on the bridge navigating, so I didn't get down the galley much. So no pill and potatoes, mate. <laughs> no, unless I was in trouble. <laughs> it's a bit of a bit of a favourite of mine at home for a while until the kids got sick of eating it. <laughs> Eight kids and all of them bored to tears with Dad's chicken curry. You want to put it all in, bro? Yeah, but not crew 15. I think it'll go down well. Yeah, that's good. Dinner's up, dinner's up. Oh. Chris likes his curries fiery, right. and his fiery's safe and happy. Looks good, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> we've, got, we've got a whole heap in there, so eat up, boys. We can... It's a little warm, a little spicy. Is it showing, is it? <laughs> it's good. All those spices are making Sully sweat. Uh, thanks. And so are all the call-outs. It's a busy night for Rescue 15. Uh, we've been called to a ring stuck on a finger. And what you find often, often people leave it too long. They, they leave it on their finger too long to actually get it off themselves. So it swells up and we may have to cut it off. Fireys are masters of multi-skilling. Tonight, Joel's a jeweler. Sitting in her lounge room, anxiously awaiting rescue, is Bridget. Look, it's better than, you know, if we don't do that, your finger's gonna swore tomorrow. Bridget's ring won't budge, and until it does, neither will she. 
Well, I was in the bedroom and I was trying to get it off and then it wouldn't come off, so I told my mum and we put soap, body lotion, ice, cold water, oil, tried everything. Yeah. The finger was just so red before the whole thing and I started panicking. What do you reckon, Joel? Should we try a little string first? Is it a sort of touch? Is that really painful? Yes, yeah, sort of. Yeah. What sort of ring is it? Is it an important ring to you? Kind of. Because oh. auntie gave it to her. We can try and get it off with a technique that saves the ring. The other option is to cut the, the ring. Cut. Which one's less painful? Uh, cutting the, the cutting ring. the ring is much less painful. Cut uh, you don't. <laughs> you sure? You can try it. Rescue 15 has a tool for every occasion. This is what we call a ring cutter. And what he's going to do is he's going to slide this part underneath your finger and then there's just a little small grinding wheel and he's just going to turn it by hand so there's no noise around. And you'll feel that going underneath your skin in the ring. See, OK? Joel works slowly and carefully. He doesn't want to damage Bridget's digits. There we go, we've we've cut through the ring, so just keep your hand still. We're going to try and stretch that open so we can slide it off your finger. Just got a little water there. Oh, there you go. Beautiful. Happily, Bridget isn't the sentimental type. Nice little mark on there. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Does that feel better, Bridget? Yes. Nice. Oh, look at that. I'm not playing sports, tomorrow. Bridget's finger is okay. the same colour as her face. Fire engine red. It's kind of funny. We turn up with a huge truck full of heaps of tools and you end up uh, assisting uh, the best you can with, a, with this tiny little item here, the ring cutter. So it's, it's, uh, it's good. Went well. Back at the apartment blaze, the tenant of flat 62 is still missing. One of the main tools that we're using in there because of the way the fire is, is our thermal imaging cameras. Because we can do a quick in, uh, internal sweep very quickly to get a good picture to see if we've actually got everyone that we need. The whereabouts of the missing resident remains a mystery. But the thermal imaging camera does confirm there's no one inside the burning unit. We've got a bit of drop down into this bottom shop, so we'll just take a crew in there and have a look at that and then um, gain entry to the ones next door and make sure it hasn't gone into there. Grab him, we'll go in here. While Crew 59 tries to put out the spot fires, Garth and Leighton have made it through the roller door into the adjoining news agency. And you know, the stand pipe just in front sees tents. You've got smoke, you've got smoke in this one, but it's not light. It's There's plenty of smoke. 27 needs to find out if the fire has spread. Up. They're looking up. The news agency has been spared, but the building is still on fire. This is what used to be the ground floor of the apartment. Suddenly, everyone's called out. The upstairs unit looks like it's about to collapse into the shop below. Crews have been forced into a defensive position. They can't get back into the building until they're certain the roof won't collapse on them. Crew 59 signals the all clear. Yeah, no, my crew's all right. We're going back in. Yeah, it's the only way to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Leighton Drury, you come back around to the front of the shop, mate. We're going in, mate. Where's, where's um, Knuckle Knuckle? Where are we going in here? Back in where we were. New spot fires are springing up everywhere. While the fire looks under control from this angle, that's not how Bullet sees it. That hot spot there, it's right in the middle of the roof, so we've got to just gain access from the front and try and put that one out. Bankstown Airport Alert 1, Harper 62. Fire engine. Got an air alert at Bankstown Airport. Found two persons on board. Landing gear, unsafe warning light is on in the cockpit. Uh, heading down to Bankstown Airport, we've got a, uh, an airport alert, which is a plane that's either in trouble or can't get a nose wheel down, some other fog.
Crew 62 stationed just a few minutes from Bankstown Airport. And right now there's an emergency underway. The evidence like this, it's all hands on deck. Because of the risk of fuel, aircraft, um, they can turn quite nasty quite quickly. So we bring the resources in to stand by. We've got a light aircraft with three people on board and they went to do a landing at Hoxton Park uh, Airport and there was a sensor light that came up that indicated that there was no front landing gear. So they've, they're, flying, they're flying back to Bankstown where we've got fire protection. They'll do a fly pass and see if there's any, um, any problem with the landing gear. So we'll ascertain whether the landing gear is up or down and then, then we'll try and work out our um, plan of attack from there. The Cessna makes its final pass. If the landing gear isn't working, the pilot will have to attempt an emergency landing. The apartment fire has been burning for over an hour now. It's just halfway down on the left hand side. That red glow on the tick camera helps Bullet locate a new spot fire. It was a massive hot spot before and now it's gone down. It's only like two small spots, so he must be getting it. So. It may only be small, but in these conditions, the fire won't stay that way for long. We knew there was only one person that was supposed to be in there and they were accounted for. They're staying 50 kilometres away tonight, so they weren't actually in the residence that was on fire. The woman who normally lives in the flat chose a good night for a sleepover. It turns out the fire was accidental, but there's still plenty of cleaning up to be done. Juliet Romeo, Yankees on down with us. A Cessna is about to touch down at Bankstown Airport. The landing gear might look to be down, but the cockpit computer is warning that it hasn't engaged. There's a student pilot behind the controls and he's preparing for an emergency landing. So the front landing gear is, um, is operated and um, so we're just going out here now with the ambulance and the police and the aviation authority and we'll just check on the gear and make sure everything's okay. Hey guys, safe landing, that's good. The fault that was with the front landing gear seems to have been a, um, a fault in the indicator panel so they've been able to land safely. We'll escort them back to the, uh, to the hangar to make sure there's no other incident, the, the uh, front wheels don't collapse, make sure they get back safely. So a smooth landing for the student pilot. But unbeknownst to 62, they're in for a bumpy ride tonight. Station drills happen every day at every station. Truck maintenance is a big part of the gig. They're doing, uh, they're doing some hydraulics in the engine bay and I've skipped out to uh, feed these guys. Rescue 15 is a crack unit, all right. And they've got the fish tank to prove it. Uh, yes, our fish reside in the uh, trophy that D-14 um, got in 2002. And there's, there's a couple of other trophies, and uh, some of them have fish in them as well. Come over this one. This is, uh, this is probably my favourite, this one here. This is our fighting fish in the uh, World Extrication Challenge Friendship Trophy. But we've got more trophies than we know what to do with. These guys are world beaters, but nothing beats the real thing. MBA, persons trapped. Harbour 15. Rescue 15. Just off to an MBA, persons trapped, uh, with Concord Station and, and us in the rescue, and. Uh, we don't know anything further this time. Rescue 15 arrives at the crash scene to find a lady trapped and two scared little boys sitting in the back. The driver is also the boy's carer. G'day, guys. How are you, mate? How are you doing? You OK? Bit of a crash, huh? Yeah, How are you, fun. buddy? What's happened is they've yeah. had a bit of a prank in the front. This baby's got a little bit of neck pain, and this guy's got a bit of a bump on his head. So Ooh, we do you do have a good bump. Samir is in a lot of pain and needs to get to hospital as quickly as possible. Just 
While Sully gets on with freeing the injured woman, Joel sets about making a couple of new friends. My name's Joel. What's your name, Scott? Ahmed. Ahmed? And who's this guy? Noah. Noah and Ahmed. Can you give us a little bit of background on, on Noah in the chair there? Is he, um, what's his communication like? Is he, uh, does he speak much? No, no, not communicative. He's got a mild intellectual disability. How good is With two young children of his own, Joel is a consummate kid wrangler. Good, right, good, so you a bump on the head. Treat with all that no, you did well, mate. You, you did more. well. <laughs> Knocks to the head are potentially very serious. No one needs to get to hospital, but first they have to free Samira. And no one is sure just how badly she's injured. I'm going to get the board under first, then we're going to go your way. I can put the seat down too, if you like. That's it. <laughs> Rescue 15's at the scene of a car crash. The driver appears badly injured, but she's not the only one in need of help. Fireys have to be ready for any emergency, including a frightened child. The teddy's for little Noah. He's still shaken up, but Ahmed is having a grand old time. Look at the ambulance, Hey Noah, would you like a little fire brigade teddy bear? That's for you, mate. Just because you're in a big accident and you got a good bonk on the head? I'll pat him. Yeah, you can pat him. That's, that's good. Yeah, sure. The teddy does the trick, but no one's sure if Noah understands what's going on. One by one, the passengers are removed from the taxi. All right, Noah, what we're going to do is we're just going to take you out of the cab now. We're OK, Matt. We got you. I've got, you got, I've, you I've got the back. You're right, Noah. You're OK, right. Matt. Noah's struggling to cope with everything that's going on, but that bump on his head needs to be checked out. It's always a bit of a, a big thing for the kiddies. Plenty, plenty of people around, a lot of, a lot of things happening, and I'm sure it's a bit scary for him. <laughs> Night shifts are like a good book. You never know how they're going to turn out. So quiet. The van has been dumped on a long and lonely private road, then torched. This has been burning for all. It's 88's fourth car fire in as many weeks. Is that on? And in an isolated area like this, all it takes is a single ember to start a bushfire. Trying to bring water to the, to the van. Initially, we'll try and knock it down. And, um... Cool it all down, and then we'll extinguish it as we go. But water's only a temporary solution. There aren't any hydrants out here, and a fire truck only carries 1,800 litres of water. That's 10 minutes at full pressure. We're using a foam, we're using a Class A foam on the car. It, um, it just knocks it down a lot quicker and smothers the flames, so we can sort of get it extinguished a lot faster. It's the type of uh, foam that we carry on the pumper. So we just use it at the start on a, on a vehicle like this when it's been burning for a long time. And we take nearly all the water on our pump to um, extinguish it. But uh, I dare say it's been burning that long because of the private road that we're on. It's now a job for police and the local wreckers. Why are we going? I'm actually uh, on Halvo Street and there's a whole lot of smoke coming out of one of the shops. Station 62 is back on the road. This time, it's a call to a warehouse fire. They're the fourth crew to arrive at the empty building. There's smoke billowing out everywhere, 
but no one knows the source of it. Uh, we're just trying to go in through the back door, so we're just setting up a, a hose line, so I've got some water only going the back door. Um, we'll they try the side door. There's plenty of smoke in the basement, but no fire. They decide to try another entrance on the level above. With the intense heat and the electricity still not cut off, this is a risky situation. Flashover happens when there's just the right mix of heat, smoke and oxygen to create a sudden burst of flame. If there's going to be a flashover, it'll happen any moment now. Station 62 is trying to find a way into that smoking warehouse. They need to bust open a door, but that could spark a flashover. Straight away, they start drenching the building. The heat is intense. The thermal imaging camera is the only safe way to find the source of the smoke. So it looks like the back wall is the door, so there. That's what we know, yeah. What's that? Hot spots is. See the white areas? They're hot spots. The brighter the glow, the hotter the area. Oh, temperature inside. Uh, you'd probably be looking at inside, maybe 700 degrees Celsius. Yep. That white flare appears to be the main source of the smoke. There's a second hot spot to the right. It's all very suspicious, so the fire investigation unit are called in. I think, I think it's on this level, right. and we've been hitting it for about five minutes. I'd be guessing the suit of the fire would have been like 10 metres up the building. I mean, by all means, let's have a look downstairs. So if that's your fire over there against that wall over there, yep. you've got that one over there. The other one's what, about five metres? Yeah, just up, it's up here against this wall. Up against this wall, right over here. Yeah. The fire investigation unit join the search. This is the main set of fire just here. You can see from the uh, up here that the fire's up high. Down low, it's relatively unaffected. So the fire started top down rather than bottom up. It's a good early indication that it's arson. It's a giant blow to owner Antonio, who's been hard at work getting the place ready for its first tenant. It's going to be Salvation Army. They're going to come in here and rent it. We bought it, bought it as an investment property. We've been busting our gut here for the last month, doing work, getting it ready for them. So, yeah, it's not a good feeling. Uh, we're just going in now to the rear of the building. Uh, there's still some hot spots under the floorboards. So we're just going to smash a few holes, get a hose line up there and get some water on it, just to cool it off so it doesn't reignite. With the building ventilated, Scoozy and the crew cut away the charcoal timbers and secure the building. The cause of the fire still isn't known, but investigators are on the case. Remember Samira from the car crash? She suffered a serious neck injury. She's now too scared to drive anymore. Hello. Noah's fine. He escaped with nothing more than a bump on his head. After the apartment fire, Crew 27 finished their shift with a little celebration to mark Bullard's 15 years on the job. One and a half decades of service. Now that's quite an achievement. Good on you, Bullard. Now, search and rescue. <laughs>